Hello, how's everybody doing today? Well, I got some interesting information today. I had to take a break yesterday because I had to speak with someone. I contacted uh, my good buddy, Dreamer James, and I wanted to uh, actually get a chance to talk to him about what he's seeing compared to what I'm seeing. And it was pretty interesting conversation. We 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 didn't we're not going to put it on. Um, there's some details in there that we're we're not going to put it on yet. But I had to get together with him after I had pulled the few cards that I pulled and the stuff that come out with that. Um, before I do the reading today, I want to go over some things. There's a few tidbits I can share with you. Um, that we discussed after the Shangri-La card, um, James came into forefront. So I needed to reach out. To him. And it was a great conversation. I loved it. So um, let's get right into this. The other day when I pulled the Shambhala initi initiations, retreat, recharge, trusting in the process and the Dhar Dharma card, um, I got a lot of downloads with this card with with a few cards that come up um the other one that come up the first one that come up was the heart source card uh all encompassing love unconditional acceptance and serenity go back and watch the video it was part one and part two and i, I think there was a reason why it was part one and part two because it had a lot of uh, downloads in them this card me and James talked about it. Uh, James is the Shangri-La guy. I never heard of Shangri-La until James. James goes to the festival every year and he absolutely loves it. Um, but we talked about it and he had looked into Shangri-La also. Um, we know that we're getting downloads. Um, we know that that is happening. We just didn't know from where. Uh, you know, if you want to find the secret of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, vibration, Nikola Tesla. We have waves, ripples right now going around this universe, and we're all connecting. Uh, I found a document that talked about the Shambhala, the Shangri-La, and it was really interesting. The gentleman that wrote a book about the Shangri-La I think it was New Horizons back in 1933, which is coincidence that is the, you know, bank runs and uh, the Great Depression started and everything else. But he was from uh, the United Kingdom and he wanted to write the story, but they told him that it, because of the, the Christian belief, it was fiction. So if you're told it was fiction, then it's fiction, whether it's fiction or not. I really don't think that the Shangri-La was fiction because of what we found um in the story that i had read i'm just gonna get pieces of it okay as above as is below in the realm of shambhala the reason why it's never been found there was a lot of explorers that went and looked for shambhala because it was supposed to be the enlightening place like the master when you get to the master level you could go, you know, the Dalai Lama, the yogis, all of them went, wanted to go to Shambhala. So the reason it was never, it had never been found is because people were looking in the wrong place. Um, there was a lot of people that come back and said they found it, but there was no proof that they found it. There were explorers that went off to look for it and never come back. There were some that just never found it. So... Shambhala is described as a land, uh, a landscape transformed, transformed by visions of yogi taking a journey there. So it's kind of like going on, uh, let's say, a magic mushroom trip or you're going into another dimension or you're in a meditation and you're going into this other dimension that you can see. Or when I'm in my dreams, um, I'm flying and I'm in a whole nother place. Uh where we would see a mountain gleaming with snow, he would see a golden temple. You know, I've been saying golden. Uh, Shangri-La is the temple of gold. It, it's it's the enlightened. It is the... When you make it to 
where you need to go, you are you're seeing Shambhala. So I read all about this, and what I'll do is I'll I'll post a link to the article that I found in the show more section. Um, but there was a story towards the end that I really just drew me in and needs to be told. An old Tibetan story tells of a young man who set off on a quest for Shambhala. After crossing many mountains, he came to the, ca to the cave of an old hermit who asked him, where are you going across these vasts of snow mountains? To find Shambhala, the youth replied. Ah, well then, you need not travel far, the hermit said. The kingdom of Shambhala is in your own heart. When we got this card, we also got this card, heart source. We have been saying that everything is in your, and, and James agreed with me. What I have been saying about the third eye trickery and the, the source above us, above our crown, and within our heart, the Christ consciousness, he agrees with that, that aspect. And I agree with that aspect. After I had read this and we got these cards the other day, uh, we really need to go into our heart space. And unless we're loving ourselves, not ego-wise loving ourselves, uh, but unless we're loving ourselves and the people around us, we are not mastery yet. We are not there yet. So we need to get there. So that was really interesting <clears throat> what we had pulled up about Shambhala. And as soon as I pulled that card and they started talking about Shangri-La, James popped right into my head. I mean, it was just like, wow, okay, that's what it is. And I just thought it was like this music festival, like kind of like a Woodstock thing where everybody gets together and loves each other. But yeah, it's a little bit more and it's a little deeper than that. So it was wonderful that we got those cards and I got to uh, find the story of Shambhala. Now, I pulled some other cards and I pulled them the other night. It was supposed to be a reading yesterday, but I just didn't, I, I couldn't get to it yesterday. And I think it's okay because I think there's always reasons to stop you from doing what you need to do. Now, the first card that I got was the <clears throat> Two of Earth. This is balance, work, and play. Balancing responsibility and personal needs. Be open to compromise. Be confident but grounded. Realistic goals and expectations. Take stock and forgive your limitations and ask for help. You know, this is an interesting card. I don't really know what it says yet, but this is this this card is feels like me right now. And and it could be everybody right now. She's juggling. She's grounded, but she's juggling so much. And with the hurricane that happened, we're juggling so much. And we asked for help. And we did get a little help. And it was wonderful. It it really was to see. The people reach out, even to say, are you okay? You know, that that was help with the heart. It isn't about the money for me and all that. It, it's the heart. It's the love. I get sentimental when it comes to love. <laughs> okay. So she has her third eye covered on the forehead too. I think that's trickery. I think we need to walk away from that aspect of the spiritual part and look up here. She's wide open above her her crown she's connecting with source and she's got her heart right here those are the two main main things that we need to remember connect with source and go in with the heart so she's juggling the eggs she's got a rose a flower around her throat chakra She's got a vine at her belly button. She's got her medicine bag. She's surrounded by a bush with flowers in it. And 
trees. And what brings to mind is I never told you guys the story about the tree that fell on our camper. There's a very beautiful, it's actually a beautiful story to me. The tree saved our lives. Mother Earth saved our lives. Believe it or not. I do a lot of grounding on this land. And I love this land. I love the trees. I don't want to cut trees down. I don't want to cut, you know, bushes down. I just love them. So when this hurricane hit and uh, there was tornadoes kicking up, this tree that fell on our, our camper, um, it could have done more damage than what it did. And I'm amazed as big as the tree was, because it was huge. It was a huge, huge tree that it didn't crush us. It should have. With all means, it should have. When that tree landed on our camper, a small branch came through our skylight and a small branch came through the wall in the drawer. Not enough to do any damage. A little bit, you know, a little hole in the in the side of the camper and the skylight we had to replace and it did some crack on the roof. But that, you know, that can be sealed. That can be fixed. That's no biggie. But right after that tree had fell over our, and it was literally hugging our camper at that point, gusts of wind came and I could feel, I was standing right over there. I could feel the camper, whole camper move. If that tree wouldn't have been there hugging us and holding us down, this camper would have rolled. And I don't know if we would have survived because we might have been over in the neighbor's yard or over in the field. Or it would have been lifted and ripped apart. I don't know. All I know is Mother Earth protected us with that tree. I honestly believe that. So does my husband. So this card is beautiful. This card is telling you that the Earth, you can juggle all you want. You can juggle everything you want. But the earth will ground you the medicine bag. It will heal you. It would do things that you normally wouldn't expect. Some people would say, oh, my goodness, I had a tree fall on my place. And it was just horrible. The tree was just. But there were other circumstances beyond that tree, that wind that could have ripped you apart and threw you around and you would have been dead. So I'm not going to the tree, I think, in my opinion, and even our neighbor said, if that tree wouldn't have been over you that tree saved your life. You might have been thrown, thrown around. So just keep that in mind. The two of earth symbolizes the importance of balancing work, home, family, and play whilst remaining flexible and adaptable in meeting one's commitment and responsibility. You are filled with a sense of purpose. You have goals and dreams, nurturing them, be willing to do what is needed in order to make them manifest. But do so with mindfulness and the awareness that all you do has an impact on those around you. Be confident, trust in both yourself and abilities, but also be flexible, adaptable, and open to compromise. Self-belief is the key to maintaining a healthy equilibrium. If you believe that you can achieve your goals and meet your responsibilities at the same time, then there is a good chance that you can be grounded, grounding yourself in reality. Realize that you are not superhuman or perfect. There is a limit to what you can do and achieve without burning the candle at both ends. Be aware and respectful of your physical and mental emotional needs. Forgive your limitations, ask for help, and share your responsibilities if you need to. Before you start to drop things because you are mentally, physically, and emotionally worn. You know what that feels like at this point. And, uh, I can agree with that. <clears throat> so that was a beautiful card. And the card that came out with that one was stability, the strength card. And I'll tell you, I know that the strength card, sometimes I have pulled it out of me because I know I'm Leo, I'm the lion, but I'm also a Scorpio moon. And there's other things, you know, that are me. 
And this card, stand firm, be calm, and take the higher moral ground. The situation is a test of your character, and you are resilient and patient enough to withstand ongoing challenges without panicking or a compromise that doesn't feel right. I might have my dogs barking a little bit. We have chainsaws in the neighborhood. We have hammering. We have people fixing their roofs and cutting cutting trees and dogs are going to kind of bark a little bit here and there, but I'm not going to stop it too much until they get crazy because this kind of muffles it a little bit. So hopefully you won't hear too much of the chainsaws. The We've got roofs over there being fixed. So just bear with us of the, the hurricane stuff around here. Everybody's rebuilding their utopia. So The other card that we got was the Sentinel, the 12 of Earth, and that's a three, that's Trinity again. We've been getting a lot of Trinity. I think we really, really, really need to connect the source. Service to a higher purpose, loyalty to authority to speak for others. Is your power real or part of Follow the rules or directions given. Use personal power wisely. Question everything. Blind loyalty makes one blind. Um, the Sentinel has been coming up a lot. You know, I, I see her as she's got the dagger over that third. I'm telling you, that third eye is the dagger. That third eye that we've been talking about forever. Trickster. That's not what we, she's got her third eye, green. The beautiful, the the dog is her partner. You've got the ants, the worker ants. Uh, she's got the keys. She's got pine cones, coins, the gold, and she's blind. We've got the sentinel a couple times. Um, I think there's something. The sentinel of Earth symbolizes service to the king and the country. The sentinel is a trusted servant who has access to and control over all within it his lord's domain he will begin of noble blood himself is in service to and speaks for and one above him his duties are many he is respected by some and feared by others and holds the keys to both the treasury and the dungeon he is both judge and mediator you know i have a real problem with people who you know you get these courts of law and you get all this stuff where were they Where's your, unless you have somebody that's seen everything, that's just hearsay. We've got to really be careful about anybody pointing fingers at anybody. I think that card kind of describes it a lot. And with that, I got the high priestess wisdom. The five. Listen to your inner wisdom, which will guide you towards a new educational path, belief, and teacher. Um, I think we need to really look into things like that before we listen to anybody from now on. I think a lot of people have been telling us uh, a lot of fairy tales and we've been following it. I think the fairy tales are going to come to an end real soon. The other card that I got was the Eight of Air. Boy, is he beautiful. And I've got this card before. Ego does not always tell the truth. Effect will always follow cause. Time to change your ways. Admit that you made a mistake. Memory is imperfect. Self-justification does not mitigate harm. Consequences are inescapable. We all make mistakes. We are creatures driven by ego. You know, we've been talking about the ego. Have you ever seen these pictures on Facebook where people are taking pictures of themselves in the mirror? That's ego. That's the ego you don't want. It's, it's, look at me. Look how pretty I am. Um, that's not a good ego. That is a snide, condescending, in my opinion, ego. We are creatures driven by our ego. Our ego is in part our identity, the center of our consciousness. It is driven by our instincts and base desires and constraints by culture and society. It can have us feeling confident and certain, or it can have us feeling uncertain or afraid. It can also employ one of several defense mechanisms to shield us from uncomfortable truths or a reality that we are not willing to or ready to accept. 
so many of us are afraid of the truth. We can we can be afraid of the truth that our ego will work hand in hand with our primal instinct and do what it can to protect us. If our ego is wounded or we have been taught to fear, the defense mechanism employed may also be detrimental to good health, well-being, and to our relationship with others. Our need to feel safe, to feel good, and to be right, to be better, to be needed, and to be loved can result in the in the good in the evidence at hand. Reality being distorted and shaped to fit our perception of events so that we want to believe is in conflict with fact. What did I just say the other day? I had been looking at perception of what I I seen when I was younger and over my lifetime of people and things that happen in my life. And I really think we need to look at the perception of things because our perception is is off. Um this card he has if you see his if you notice his hands he's got the dagger bleeding in one hand and he's got the the dagger going up, not bleeding in the other hand. And this to me is a choice. His, his forehead third eye is purple. It's it's blocked out. But his crown is glowing. He's got the wings. His his ch chakras are lit up beautifully like a rainbow. He is determined. I mean, look at his face. He's totally determined. But he's got a choice to make. This is the harmful ego. And this is the loving ego. And he has to make the choice which one to be. It's all of our choices. We could either be the pretty boy or girl looking in the mirror at ourselves and saying, look at me. Or we can walk with confidence and know that we are a beautiful being inside and out. But it's our choice. I love that card. Now, that was all for those I did get with that one. I got new beginnings, the fool. Look before you leap, and if you like what you see, dive right in. We have to look before we leap. We have to look at the perception of what we have on something. And I had another card clarifier fly out, so I kept it just because it was the angel of the ocean healing. You'll need to work a little magic now to reconcile op op opposites. Be patient and compassionate, and you will get everything done. So these cards are telling us that we have projects. We have things that we have to fulfill in this lifetime. And if we've been putting it off, don't put it off. If we've been procrastinating, don't procrastinate. There's things that you have to do in life, whether you want to or not. But I think you need to look at the perception of why you're doing it and is it, if it's right for you and if it's right for everybody, then you need to do it. And if it's not, then don't do it. Be the choice that you want to be. So I did the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. When I received this, this was a birth, my birthday, my birthdays and presents are always late. Usually from my mother, my mother's dementia, so my brother takes care of it. So usually I don't get my birthday present until a month after my birthday, but it's okay because that's the only birthday present I get. So I told my brother that I found this and I wanted it. So I got this just, I mean, like a few days before the hurricane and I didn't get to use it. But let me tell you something. This gateway of light activation has really opened my eyes to a lot of things this these cards talk me and last night i was looking i want to get another oracle deck but nothing is coming out with me it has to i have to feel it 
I have to feel the energy. I went to uh, Rock of Ages yesterday and I was looking at them and I did not feel the energy, but I did. I was going to get a moonstone. It felt like a moonstone was calling me, but I didn't get a moonstone because I didn't feel the energy when I picked up the moonstone, but I did feel the energy when I picked this up. This is a seven stone, seven stones in it. It has purple amethyst, moonstone, uh, smoky quartz, and there's some other ones, and I can't even remember what they were she was telling me, but it was the energy that I felt. With me, it, it's not about what the name of it is or what it is. It's the energy you feel. Look how beautiful that is. So I keep it right here with my hematite because if I get stressed, I just do this and I pick it up and it makes me feel better. So anyway, I have something I need to tell you now. When I'm talking about trigger moments, I had a trigger moment the other day. I went into the Dollar General and I was standing there and this gentleman was talking to the lady that worked there and he said he had been in, in his house for 18 days and he hadn't been out. She says, what are you trying to brag about? And he says, no, I was sick. So I kind of backed up a little bit because then he said he had taken the you know, that, I'm like, oh, gosh, so she says, oh, yeah, I took that, too, and she says, I was so sick, and do, 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 and he says, well, he says, I'm probably going to have to take the next one, you know, the... and he said, just to go back to work, and I triggered, I literally, I, I didn't get mean, I said, you do not have to do anything for a job like that, and if you do, you need to think about that, and he looked at me like, really I have a choice there's that choice I have a choice hmm. and she looked at me like wow you should have took the like everybody else and just went along with the program so I they were still talking and I checked out I I had to get out and as I was walking out of the store I was talking out loud and I'm like trigger 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 and this gal was walking up and she says, oh, she says, I have those all the time. And she starts talking about spiritual. And I said, I'm, I'm very spiritual. But I, it, she started talking about listening to somebody. I think it was some, I said, I don't listen to, I'm not into the religious part of the spirituality. I mean, I know it's already within us. And she says, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. And we started talking. And it was only like maybe a five minute conversation, I'd say. And I, she says, well, it was really nice meeting you. And I said, yeah, it was really nice meeting you too. And I went on my way. She was helping me get out of that trigger moment. I mean, it was literally, I had to escape the trigger moment. I knew it. I couldn't sit on it, dwell on it, soak on it and cry about it. I had to get rid of it. And I was trying to get rid of it by saying trigger, trigger, trigger. And she stopped. And she basically, there was that person, that, that shadow person walking by that person in the background that needed to step to the forefront and, and help me release my trigger moment. And it did. So that was interesting that somebody was there at the time that I needed them and there they were, and they were just passing by. So that was interesting. Okay. We got some interesting cards and these cards, I got to the point where I'm just going to let these cards flow. I'm not going to stop them. Uh, because they need to talk. Now, this is the first card that I got. The Anunnaki Light Codes. Let me tell you something. We are getting downloads like crazy. I don't know if you're not noticing them. But I have this feeling you are noticing them. This card is... And I hope this... Mo I'm, I think I'm going to have to take some Benadryl because this moss has all of us itching like crazy, blowing around these trees it fell. The Anunnaki Light Codes, Energetic Shift, New Information, End of Cycle. I think I have it two months ago where I said the shift is happening. We're out of the storm, the calm, and we're going, it's going to get rough. So two months prior to this, I knew something was going to something was going on i think a lot of us did so the anunnaki are a race of cosmic light beings who have been coming to earth since ancient times the sumerians and the babylonians acknowledge them as the deities who govern the space between the worlds the divine leader of this incredible race is the goddess ishtar 
a powerful figure similar to the Egyptian goddess Isis. The Anunnaki have taken many forms throughout the ages. They have an angelic warrior-like quality and have appeared with wings sometimes up to four and with an elongated head and face similar to that of an eagle. When the Anunnaki appear, it's important to know that they are heavenly allies supporting our healing and ascension. In the distant past, they visited the Atlantean civilization and helped those who were aligned with the spiritual path to ascend to the next dimension so that they could leave the wheel of karma. They acted as divine judges, deciding who could ascend and who had to be left behind for growth of their soul. Those who had abused their powers and had no honor, the divine or valued the great gift of life they had been given had to remain for the catalyst, catalytic ending of their civilization. For that reason, some people who have had Atlantean incarnations may fear the Anunnaki, but be assured that they are beings of infinity light working for source. Connect. Say Anunnaki, Anunnaki, Anunnaki. I welcome in the presence of an Anunnaki people. Thank you, An angelic cosmic beings, for immersing my energy body in the light codes. Your message. Great change is coming to you, but this can only occur if you are willing to shift your perception. I'm telling you, people, don't question the things that are coming to you. The perception, you need to really look at who you are, who you're around, and what you're doing. Because there was another thing that came up in the Shangri-La thing. The only one that could make it to Shangri-La were the pure at heart. So heart source is, heart space is very important. You may be experiencing resistance to change, but please know, this is simple fear of the new, not intuition. If you are wondering what is the best course of action, the Anunnaki are encouraging you to go with the new. Old systems, old ways of being, and old ways of doing things must be released. If you are to evolve, change can bring a sense of vulnerability, but will allow you to make a deeper connection to your feelings feelings, gifts, and what is important to you. You are standing at a gateway of pure potential that will be ignited as soon as you move through this necessary change. Be open to new information, new processes, and new ideas. You are part of the new energy upon earth. Wow. I love that. That is where we want to go. New energy, new earth, new feelings, new perception. I love that. I love this. I love this deck. If I, I like I said last night, I looked through must have been a hundred decks and nothing, nothing at Rock of Ages stuck out. Nothing. So I haven't found one that I really, really love yet. But I really love this one. This is a beautiful card. Oh, you know what I noticed? It kind of looks down here like a butterfly in in stained glass. It's beautiful. Okay. Ancestral realm, karmic release, healing the lineage, boundaries. In every incarnation, we have been blessed to be part of a lineage that helps us live our life and embark on learning experiences. And for hundreds and even thousands of years, those who have walked the earth before us have prayed for a better life. We are an answer to those prayers. Even though they may no longer be on the physical plane, our ancestors are living through our choices and experiences. None of our ancestors had a perfect. After all, they were human too. They made poor choices. They had mistake, mistaken views. Many of their intentions were honorable. Many were not. All of this is held within the ancestral lineage. As are many beliefs, ideas, and limitations that are outdated, fear-based, and even harmful. All these karmic energies can hold us back. But when someone decides to walk the spiritual path, whether they release it or not, 
their life becomes an answer to their ancestors' prayers. When this card comes to you, your life is an answer to a great ancestral call. Wow, that's beautiful. I love that. Connect. Place your hands on your heart and say either in internally or out loud, great ancestors, earthly lineage, soul lineage, thank you for bringing to my awareness a karmic blockage and that that are preventing me from reaching my greatest potential. Your message, this card initiates healing on all levels, but particularly on the family line. They, there may be some ideas and beliefs in your family that you find limiting and negative. Know that they need not be your truth. You have the opportunity to go beyond the challenging energies of your family lineage. If you are in a particular challenging time or facing energies that are harsh and even overwhelming, the energy of your ancestors is with you now. They are here to hold a sacred and safe space so that you can rest. Your ancestors are surrounding you now. They are here to seek forgiveness for any harmful decisions that were made without full awareness and for any negative effects those are having on you now. If you have found that a particular family member has been difficult or a relationship has been negatively impacted because of situations or ideas that stem from the past, know that a great cleansing is taking place at this time. The anoint anointment for the wound is the energy of forgiveness. This isn't about accepting what happened as fine, but realizing that the energies of the past no longer govern your presence. It's about choosing to create your own happiness and living your own heart. Keep your boundaries strong, but be open to carving out a new path. We are carving a new path. And, you know, there's something else interesting that I heard the other day. Some people think that we are creating, and I've, I've said it, we're creating heaven on earth. But the old earth is still going to be here what we're doing is we're envisioning the new create. I think we're going to start taking the, the glasses off, putting the glasses on and seeing a different view of everything. I think that things have been distorted in our world. And when we go into the heart space and we start seeing and realizing things, then I think things will come to the forefront. This card that come out was amazing. Venetian Galactic Council star being guides answer the call. Time to shine. These cards are so beautiful that, that when I put them here, they just like, it's, it's like they, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like it gets brighter. It, it emanates, they emanate light. The Venetians are advanced cosmic beings similar to angels who come from the planet Venus. They are, they are starry ancestors and are dedicated to helping us experience and embody divine love. There are millions of them. And many of us will have them working with us as guides. If you feel drawn to this information or are strongly connected to the star, stars or star people, there's good chance that there are many extraterrestrial beings around you at this time. Many of to whom will be connected to the Venetian Galactic Council, governed by Lady Venus and Sanata Kumara. The Venetian Galactic Council is a divine board of directors who are responsible for recruiting light workers and leaders on Earth who have the potential to make a huge difference by following the call of their soul. When they come to us, it's an honor and an opportunity to be reminded of a connection that was active before we came into this incarnation. There's no set way of working with the Venetians, but they will contact us in dreams or meditation to share information that will support us on our journey. They often send spiritual downloads in thought for me, forms and understandings, dreams about flying or being in space, are other ways in which they will come through to us. I'm always flying in my dreams. On a bright starry night, say, Venetian Galactic Council, thank you for helping me answer the call of my soul. 
your message. This is a call to action. You are being asked to step up and create the changes you want to see in the world. You have a reason for being there and you have the potential to inspire, support, and heal your corner of the world. Don't let this information scare you or overwhelm you, for you are being prepared energetically to step into this role. The ideas you have been having recently are divine downloads, but you aren't being called to make dramatic changes to your life. Simply to move forward step by step, the Venetian Galactic Council will reveal more information to support you. Be aware of downloads or information and spiritual signs. For there are confirmation that you are on the right path. I've known I'm on the right path. I can feel it. Every day I can feel more and more that I'm on the right path. Now, I also did the Soul Helper Oracle. I had one card come out, a number 18. Lost in the ruins of the past, find the way to the present moment and live. You are a traveler on the path of your soul. You will need all your courage as you are follow following the light of your heart into an uncertain future. However, you have now drawn this card, and it is a very important sign. You have become lost in the ruins of the past, in ruins that are the remains of an unpleasant or difficult time. You have looked back too often instead of looking forward at times trapped in places in the past that should have long since ceased to exert power over your life. Even if you could go back, you would find yourself alone and deserted. You would not meet anyone there. So what is that you seek in these silent ruins that can offer you only loneliness and bitterness? They symbolize all you missed, all your missed opportunities, but you cannot restore them now. They are what they are. If your lineage if you linger there, you will begin to see your life as meaningless and sad when it is really a wonderful and magical adventure. Feel the light of your heart and hear the sound of your soul. Continue on your path to discover endless possibilities, new adventures, new encounters, and even a new love. If you live tenuously in the light portal of the presence, your eyes firmly fixed on the future, you will be on the path of your soul. Leave the past behind and find your way back to the present. If it it is now important to forgive yourself and continue your journey, your gaze fixed firmly ahead. Your helpers for the next 21 days, the power animal is the mouse, the herbal essence is lemon, the healing crystal is black opal, and the number is nine. Let's see what nine has to say. Number nine reveals that you have something new to learn. Be open, receptive, and curious enough to seek it out. You will then find wisdom and unconditional deep healing love. Number nine will help you reach a point of completion so that you can turn your attention to the mysteries of the unknown and the new. Its energy field is indestructible without being inflexible. Number nine always remains true to itself. Nine plus nine, 18. Whose digit add up to nine? Nine times nine, 81. Those digits add up to nine. Multiply any number by nine. Nine stays there. Together and they always add up to nine. It's almost as if it absorbs every other number through its calculations. Number nine teaches you how to do this, to accept the powers offered to you in order to achieve perfection. This number is fulfillment and completion, but also begins end and end beginning and an ending this card if you can see it she's they're walking down a lonely path because they're stuck in the past they're stuck in all these ruins this card always reminds me of the robin williams movie in dreams may come where she committed suicide and she was trapped here thinking about the past and, and missing her whole family when they were all already in heaven waiting for her so don't live in the past it, it's it, we're we're going to a uh it's time to shine and we're going to new beginnings and that's what these cards are saying well this was an amazing reading 
and I advise all of you to go back and watch my last part one and part two and the other one because these light code cards that are coming out they have something to tell us it's time for us to shine it's time for us to take our heart space and use it to shine shine the light on the world and be the light all right well I'm going to go out and enjoy the rest of my day. It's beautiful outside today here and everybody's working and I'm in here talking to everybody and it's time for me to go get something done. So I just want you all to know that I love you very much and I'm going to put some links in the show more section. I'll put the Shangri-La uh, thing in. Um, I have my GoFundMe page in there. If you can help, help. If you can't help, we've got a long way to go. We lost everything everything was in our garage that we had our pictures everything I did I was able to save my pictures and some other things but we got we lost a lot of stuff and we live in a camper so we have to get a garage going so we did get our windshield fixed yay with all the all the donations yay so that really really helped because we were without a car for 21 days <laughs> other than lucky our 1995 Chevy pickup truck with the wings and our little lucky that helped let us borrow his truck but boy i'll tell you when you don't have a vehicle it's really hard you can't just jump in your car and go and get supplies but we got our windshield fixed and we got our yard pretty much and donnie's out there fixing the fence because we still have the dogs we don't we have to get our fence fixed for the dogs to go out and run like the wind and play in the yard so he's working on that today and then we're going to start collecting money and getting the money up to get a shed built, a small shed so we can put our stuff in. So if you can help in any way, do it. If you can't, I completely understand. Um, I hate asking, but it is what it is and it has to be what it has to be. So I now I want you guys to make every step in your journey magical. And you know what? Just be you. Have a wonderful